Okay, so I have um, chosen to do my video on the Malibu Lagoon. Um, just because it's an area that I frequent a lot. Um, I go there, you know, once a week. I'm very interested in the management of this area and, like, specifically the lagoon. Um, yeah. So I am going to give a quick overview. Um, first, I'm going to be going over the cultural background, then giving a biological overview. Then I'm going to be going over the current management as well as management issues and the overall importance of the lagoon area. So the Malibu, Malibu Lagoon is located in Malibu, California, just off of PCH. Um, it's an area where Malibu Creek meets the Pacific Ocean and is a major tourist destination. It attracts over 1.5 million visitors a year, um, people coming from all over the world to recreate and visit the lagoon as well as the surrounding beaches. Um, it is also located next to the famous Surfrider Beach in Malibu Pier, um, Surfrider Beach is a globally is globally known as a surf hotspot for its pristine longboarding waves, and was designated as a World Surfing Reserve, which made it even more acclaimed, I believe, back in 2009 or 2010. Um, it's also located next to the Adamson House. Um, this is a place for tourists to come and visit the museum to learn more about the cultural history behind Malibu Lagoon, and it is also a venue for weddings and parties. And then you can see here on this slide, I've included a map of uh, where the lagoon is um, in orientation to all of uh, the city of Malibu. And I've also included an image of the famous Malibu Wall, which is um, just like, you know, a, a little bit south of the lagoon, um, still really close by. Um, it's an area that's like super famous and uh, lots of people come to take pictures here and you'll often see you know, like 20, 30 boards lined up against this wall, especially when the waves are really good. Um, and then over here on the left, I've included a picture of um, the uh, restored lagoon, which I'll talk a little bit more about restoration efforts uh, a little bit later. Um, but as you can see, it's, it's very beautiful, lots of native plants, super lush. Um, yeah. Um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about the Venturi Nuchuma which were the original um, occupants of the area. Um, the Chumash people occupied the area from San Luis Obispo to Malibu, inland to the San Joaquin Valley, as well as four of the Channel Islands, Anacapa, Santa Cruz, San Miguel, and Santa Rosa. Um, the town of Humaliwo specifically was found on a high point near Malibu Lagoon. Um, Humaliwo translates to where the surf sounds loudly, which is very representative of the area, given its modern day surfing significance. Um, it is uh, now a part of the state park and is managed by the California State um, Department of Parks and Recreation. Um, and I just thought it was important to talk about this, um, given they were the original occupants of the area and um, how important the ocean and wetlands were to the Chumash culture and the Chumash people. I've included an Im image of a tomal, which is a, a Chumash canoe that they use to um, travel via the sea and fish, um, and tomal translates to house of the sea. Now I'm going to be giving a biological overview. Um, Malibu Lagoon is home to uh, lots of aquatic life, uh, lots of avian life, and lots of plant life. Um, in terms of aquatic life, it serves as a corridor to many different aquatic species, including the steelhead trout. Um, in terms of avian life, it's home to over 200 different types of bird that come to the marsh um, throughout the year, including pelicans, gulls, and sandpipers. And uh, in terms of plant life, um, uh, 42 acres of wetlands are home to many native plants. Um, much of the native vegetation was planted in restoration efforts, and they provide a nursery to many of the native fish species. And I'll talk a little bit more about the restoration again later. In current management, um, it's currently managed by the California Department of Parks and Recreation and designated as a state park. Some of these management issue, management efforts can um, 
are shown through the uh, 2012 Lagoon Restoration Enhancement Project. Um, so it was initially proposed because the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency labeled the lagoon as an impaired body of water due to excess sediment and low dissolved oxygen levels. This obviously posed a threat to its biodiversity. So in 2012, the California State Department of Parks and Recreation, California State Coastal Conservancy, Resource Conservation District of the Santa Monica Mountains, the Bay Foundation, and Heal the Bay all um, work together on the Lagoon Restoration Enhancement Project um, in order to improve the lagoon. The project included excavating 12 acres of the wetland and planting native wetland plants and was completed in uh, March 31st, 2013. And I've included a picture here of the before and after of the lagoon restoration. You can really get like a good view of all of those native plants along the water's edge that provide um, nursery to uh, different native uh, aquatic species that live within the lagoon. Um, also, lots of debris and trash were found and removed from the lagoon during restoration efforts, which have, could have posed lots of severe implications for marine wildlife, both within the lagoon and in the nearby ocean, as the lagoon breaches into the ocean and serves as a sort of corridor. Um, one of the biggest accomplishments of the project, besides the improved circulation and water quality, was the return of rare species, including the California least tern and the steelhead trout. And I've included a video here of uh, the lagoon breaching, uh, just because I thought it was uh, cool and interesting to see how it serves as sort of a pathway for aquatic species to move between the ocean and uh, the lagoon. So that's kind of it. We're back. Now I'm going to be talking about some more current management issues. Um, so there was a, a Malibu Creek restoration project that was proposed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and the California State Department of Parks and Recreation. And the proposal was to remove um, the Renge Dam and other man-made structures upstream from the lagoon. Um, this would help restore the natural watershed and supply sand to the beaches nearby and also will reconnect the corridor between the lagoon and Malibu Creek and restore access to the lagoon habitat for many aquatic species. Finally, I'm going to talk about the overall importance of the lagoon. The Malibu Creek and lagoon serve as a wildlife corridor to many different species. It is also an important cultural area for people from all over the world to experience both surf culture as well as the culture of the native Chumash people. Management for this area is of utmost importance. Thank you so much for watching.